Okay, so welcome back. This is part four in our series on developing a frequency monitor circuit that will monitor the frequency of the 120 volt AC, 60 hertz wall outlet voltage we get from our utility here in the US. And the goal here, as we mentioned in previous videos, is to do kind of a long-term plotting, uh, data streaming in real time, what the actual frequency is over time. And I encourage you to look at the previous videos in this series where we talk about what we're doing, why we're doing it. And we also talk about some of the regulatory requirements that define what we can expect for frequency uh, variations and uh, how accurate we need to be with this monitoring circuit to get some really useful data. So what we're going to do uh, in this video, we've already designed this circuit that we showed in the previous videos. And um, we've got a voltage sensor that we used in our other series on uh, RMS voltage monitoring. I encourage you to look at that. We go into a great deal about this voltage sensor. Uh, but basically, it just gives you this output you see in blue here, the sine wave output, that is going from 0 to 5 volts. And it is a representation of the wall outlet, 120 volts RMS or 170 volts peak. And it's from um, 0 to 5 volts, and it hopefully gives us a good accurate representation of the waveform coming from the wall outlet so that we can calculate frequency. Uh, and you can see it's offset here so that it maintains 0 to 5 volts so we can actually feed it into an Arduino without burning up the Arduino. So we've, we've got this AC, low voltage AC, coming out of the sensor, and it's going to go into this very simple circuit with a simple op amp. And this is just a voltage comparator circuit where we've got two resistors in a voltage divider and we're tapping off the middle. And that's going to give us, in this case, three volts as a reference. And whenever this AC varying waveform goes above three volts, we should get um, a output on this um, op amp. You can see here, here's my uh, AC waveform starts out at three volts because it's an offset three volts. And when it's high, the output goes high, and when it drops below 3 volts, you can see the output goes low. This green output is the square wave coming out of this op amp. So this green is what we're going to feed into the Arduino. You can see it's less than 5 volts, and it's a nice clean square wave, hopefully representing the frequency of the wall outlet voltage. And the Arduino, uh, we wrote some code in the previous video to show that it will sense a rising edge of this voltage is coming in in the D2 pin. It will sense the rising edge and start a timer, um, and a bunch of clock pulses will t start to time out, and the next time it sees a rising edge, it will stop the timer, and the Arduino is going to grab that number, how many clock pulses between rising edges, and it's going to use that value, and it's going to calculate frequency, and then it's going to send back to our computer over the COM port just Every second, it's going to say the frequency was 60.0, 60.1, 60.0. And on our computer, we can grab that data and chart it in real time. Uh, we're going to use the Excel data streamer that you can see in real time the results, uh, but you can use other methods. So uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to, we've already got the circuit. We've got the Arduino code. Uh, we're going to show on the bench how we hook this all up. And then we're going to go to the computer and look at the real-time data and see, is it reasonable? Is it accurate? And the other thing we're going to do, you can see here we've got this unconnected voltage. In order to see how accurate this uh, circuit is in measuring and how accurate this voltage sensor is, we're also going to try to disconnect the voltage sensor and instead feed an identical sine wave with an offset that's coming out of the voltage sensor, just disconnect that and reproduce that on a signal generator, which we know is a nice clean sine wave and it's accurate. And instead use that as the input to our circuit and see if the results we get from the Arduino in terms of frequency are different from, from what we're using with the voltage sensor. So we can see how accurate we are and how accurate we need to be. So let's run over to the bench and, um, make, and see how this is all hooked up. And then we'll run to um, look at the data that we're receiving in Excel. Okay, so here's our setup we talked about in previous videos. I'll briefly go through it again. 
Uh, I've got, of course, my multimeter, which is directly reading the uh, frequency of the AC wall outlet voltage. It's reading the 120 volt AC. You can see it's right near 60 hertz. Um, I've got my scope connected, these probes down here. And basically the blue is the input coming from this voltage sensor into our circuit. The yellow is the output that's going to the Arduino. It's the square wave we talked about. Here I've got my Arduino hooked up um, to the circuit and it's sending, it's now grabbing and sending data to the computer. Here's my uh, 6 volts DC applying to the circuit. And what we're going to do is run back to the computer and we're going to look at the data coming from this Arduino into the computer and we're going to compare it to the reading that we see on this multimeter. So we're getting one second readings from the Arduino and we're going to compare those to what's the actual from this uh, multimeter and see if this data is bouncing around or if it's nice and clean compared to this. Okay, so here we are at the computer and I am in Excel using what's called the data streaming uh, functionality in Excel. And we'll talk about that in a different video. But basically it allows you to connect to a COM port device like our Arduino and it will read data automatically into this Excel spreadsheet. And I've set up a chart here that will automatically, you can see it's real time, it's updating the data that we receive every second from the Arduino. In blue here, I've got the actual readings every second. Um, I've got another trace here in red, and that is a 10 second average of the readings. So basically I'm taking the last 10 readings over the last 10 seconds and getting an average. And I'm printing out that average over here. Here it's 60.01. Here I've got a multimeter that's set to hertz and it's measuring the actual wall outlet voltage. And um, here above it, I've got the one second actual readings from the Arduino. So you can compare the one second from the Arduino to what we're seeing on the multimeter. And if you look, you can see the multimeter is fairly flat. It's very consistent between 60.0 and maybe 59.9. And you can see this is bouncing around maybe 10th of a hertz or something like that. So what I've done is up here on the right, I have the minimum and maximum readings that I'm getting from the Arduino. And you can see they're both 0.1 low and 0.1 high from 60 hertz. So you can see this is bouncing around quite a bit compared to the very stable multimeter. The question is, is that sufficient, you know, to have point plus or minus 0.1 when we see the actual is, you know, maybe 0.01? That's the question. Now, it depends on what your usage is going to be. Now, here I'm taking the average of the last 10, and that's probably fairly accurate compared to these bouncing, noisy readings. So um, the question then becomes, do we want to pursue this and maybe make this cleaner? Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, yeah, let's at least take a look and see, you know, what's causing this noise and what can we do to hopefully make this a little bit cleaner? Okay, so now I have replaced the voltage sensor and the wall outlet voltage with this signal generator that's generating virtually an identical signal. And you can see uh, it's set for 3.4 volts peak to peak with an offset of 3 volts. And it's this blue uh, sinusoidal waveform going between 0 and 5 volts. And the output from our circuit with that as the input is this nice clean square wave that's going to the Arduino. So now what we can do is go back to our Excel data streamer and look at what the Arduino is calculating for frequency from this signal. And if it's nice and clean, then we can say, hey, something may be uh, going wrong with our voltage sensor circuit, or maybe the wall outlet voltage is too noisy. Uh, we saw before that when we looked at the wall outlet voltage, it looked like there was some harmonics in it. It was kind of distorted. So we're going to investigate this a little bit further and see what's going on and um, how our measuring circuit compares to the signal generator. Okay, so here we are back with our Excel data streamer and up here on the left you can see the real-time readings coming from, uh, that we're getting from the signal generator going into the Arduino that's calculating the frequency. And you can see the um, results here. The line of the 10 second averages is fairly flat. 
and the bouncing around is quite a bit less. Remember we were going up to about plus or minus 0.1? Here it is much, much less. And you can see that the one second readings are bouncing around maybe 0 0.01, 0 0.02 instead of 0.1 that we saw before. So this is starting to tell us um, we've got some nice clean readings coming out of the signal generator. Maybe there's something with our either our voltage sensor or maybe even the wall outlet voltage, the noise, the distortion of the wall outlet voltage, maybe that's causing a problem. You know, the question is, do we want to look into that any further? Does it really matter? What I'm going to do is I'm going to see if we can come out with a circuit that's a little bit different and maybe gives us a little bit cleaner signal. Uh, and maybe we're going to see if that voltage sensor isn't the best or maybe it's just the wall outlet voltage, the distortion, maybe that's causing a problem. So next thing we're going to do is go back to LT Spice and see if we can figure out a um, different circuit and see if that gives us any better results. Okay, so what I did is I took a snapshot of the wall outlet voltage coming out of our 120 volt 60 hertz wall outlet. And this is what we saw previously and I just expanded it a bit. And you can see it's clearly not a clean sine wave. There are what are called harmonics. And honestly, this is not unusual for wall outlet voltage. And there's a bunch of reasons for that, but this is kind of what we're dealing with coming from the wall outlet going into our voltage sensor. So the question is, is this bad? Is this messing up our readings? Is this giving us noise? Or maybe it's the voltage sensor. The fact that our frequency generator gave us such clean results points to um, either this waveform being noisy or the voltage sensor or maybe a combination. So what I did uh, is I did a FFT, Fast Fourier Transform uh, frequency analysis on this incoming 120 volt wall outlet voltage. And here is what I got and you can see here is our 60 hertz primary uh, frequency, but there are some other peaks of other voltages. Again, this is not unusual. And if you look at what the frequencies are, we've got a normal 60 hertz. We've got a what's called a third harmonic or three times our normal 60 hertz frequency. And I did a video a while back talking about harmonics and what they are and FFTs and that kind of thing. So I encourage you to look at that. But we clearly have a peak at 180 hertz or the third harmonic and we have another peak at 300 hertz or the fifth harmonic. And that is not unusual. These are called odd harmonics and because of things like switching power supplies and maybe fluorescent lights and nonlinear equipment on the power system either in your house or your neighbors or uh, big industries in the area you can get significant amounts of these odd harmonics that will mess up your AC waveform. The question is, does it matter? I mean, so what? You've got some odd harmonics, but does that going to change the reading of our frequency? So again, what's the problem? Um, clearly, it seems like our measuring circuit is okay because when we hook up the signal generator, it gives us a nice clean result with very few bouncing around. It's like plus or minus 0.01 hertz, which is fine. So it seems to imply our measuring circuit with the op amp is fine and the Arduino is fine. So it's starting to point at something before that. Uh, we know the input waveform is distorted and it's got odd harmonics. Therefore, we're left with two probable culprits, the voltage sensor or the incoming waveform noise and or the wiring associated with those. Maybe there's other noise getting into the wiring, but these are the two things we can, we can look at and see if um, they're, which one or both are calling, causing the problem. So what are we gonna do? Well, we can try filtering the incoming line AC waveform and see if that clears things up, right? If it's the AC waveform and those odd harmonics, maybe if you filter it somehow, that will help. Uh, but there's a problem. Um, it's 170 volts peak AC waveform. How are you going to filter that? That's going to get kind of complicated and you're going to have to have equipment rated for 170 volts or more. So eh, maybe that's not something we want to do. 
So what I'm going to start out with doing is I'm going to take my 170 volt AC waveform and feed it into a transformer. And this is a 117 volt AC to 12 volt AC power transformer that I've used in many other projects. So at least that will give us 12 volts RMS out of the secondary. And then we can start to use normal components and, and see if anything helps. So for example, I could just throw in a simple RC filter, a low pass filter, um, like a 47 ohm with a 33 microfarad capacitor. And that will give me a low pass filter with like 103 hertz cutoff. Um, is that going to matter? Well, that's, you know, we don't know, but at least it's something we can try. And then since we're dealing with nice low voltages, we can look at other options in our circuit to see if maybe we can uh, do something else. Again, it may not help, but at least we can try something. Okay, so I came up with another circuit that may or may not be any better than the last one, but at least it's going to give us an opportunity to see whether that voltage sensor is good or bad for measuring frequencies, or maybe if the wall outlet voltage that's too noisy for our readings or whatever. So again, I'm starting out, I've got my 170 volt from the wall outlet coming through a 117 volt to 12 volt AC transformer. And I'm going to start out using a simple RC filter with 103 hertz cutoff. It's a 47 ohms with a 33 microfarad capacitor. Again, does it help? Who knows? But, you know, it can't hurt. Uh, and then here I'm going through a diode because we want just positive voltage. And I'm going to use an optocoupler that I had lying around. An optocoupler is basically an LED that when this goes positive, it's going to turn on the LED. And that LED is going to turn on this transistor. And that's going to short out this um, output to zero. And then when it's off, when this input is, is low, uh, it's going to shut this off and this is going to go high. And hopefully we'll get a nice clean square wave. I'm using VCC of 5 volts. So we'll limit this output to 5 volts so we don't damage the Arduino. So again, an, just another way to generate a square wave using an optocoupler. What we're going to do is set this up on the bench and see if we get any cleaner readings in the uh, Excel data streamer. So let's first take a look at the results here. Let's run this. And let's look at what's coming out of the filter. And you can see it's a nice clean square wave, 15 volts plus or minus. And then out of the diode, you can see it's just the positive version of that. And then we're feeding that into the optocoupler. So the output should be, hopefully, a nice clean square wave. So there's the output, and you can see it's a square wave. And what I'll do is I'll get rid of this, and I'll get rid of this input, and I'll unzoom that. So you can see it's going up to 5 volts. I'll set this at 6 so we can see. So it's we're getting a nice clean 5 volt square wave, and um, hopefully that will help us get cleaner results. So we'll run over to the bench, try out this circuit, and see if we get any cleaner results in our uh, Excel. Okay, so now I've hooked up my new circuit, and you can see I've got my uh, 117 volt to 12 volt AC transformer connected to the wall outlet, and the 12 volt leads are coming into this terminal block. Now make sure, um, anytime you're working, of course, with um, high voltage, like uh, 120 volt or 240 volt wall outlet voltage, don't do this unless you're qualified. It can be very dangerous. It can hurt you, it can kill you. So be very, very careful. Um, I've got a fuse uh, here feeding the transformer. I've got a cover so you can't touch the voltages, so be very, very careful. Um, so it's coming in here and it's going to my RC filter that um, hopefully might make our uh, noise problem a little bit better. Maybe, maybe not. Now I've got my diode and my resistor going into my optocoupler, which is right here. And the output of the optocoupler is going into the Arduino. Now, be very, very careful. Again, this can only withstand 0 to 5 volts. Make sure that your um, DC supply is less than 5 volts, so you don't get more than 5 volts going into the Arduino. Uh, I'm going to do a, a video on this um, buck converter and this um, 
DC wall outlet supply I use. It's very, very nice because you can do fine adjustments on this and make sure you're um, below the level that could damage your Arduino. So anyway, this is all set and you can see I'm measuring the output going into the Arduino. Again, it's a nice clean square wave. I check to make sure that it's below 5 volts peak and it looks like we're good to go. So what we're going to do is we're going to run over to the Excel data streaming and see if this made any difference with the optocoupler and the filter and using the um, transformer instead of the voltage sensor. See if that made any difference with our readings in the Arduino. Okay, so here we are back at Excel data streaming and we are looking at the data coming from our optical sensor and our 117 to 12 volt transformer and the RC filter. And if you look at the values coming in up here on the, the left, you can see that they are fairly close to what we're reading on the meter. And if you look here on the top right, you can see the minimum and maximum are 0.02 below and above 60 hertz. So it seems, and if you look at the graph, you can see the noise has dropped quite a bit. And it seems like it's helped. It seems like it's helped a lot because before we were going, if you recall, plus and minus about 0.1 hertz. And now we're very close to, I'm going to say close to what we saw in the signal generator. So um, 5998, 5999 is the actual. So I'm guessing maybe 0 0.02, 0 0.03. Um, and that seems to be quite a bit better than what we were seeing with the voltage sensor. So the question becomes, did that help to add the RC filter? Well, who knows? Um, the voltage sensor maybe seems more likely it's the voltage sensor uh, because the question with the RC filter, did it drop the, the amplitudes of those odd harmonics enough that they would have a little effect on the um, firing of that opto isolator and and it doesn't seem like they would that small rc filter would do that much but it's anyone's guess but it seems like this definitely is a better circuit and more accurate especially if you do this trend line of the last 10 seconds of reading so um, i think we're going to call this good this opto isolator with a transformer Again, you need a transformer, and that's maybe a $10 or $15 device, but it seems to be quite a bit more accurate than our voltage sensor, at least for frequency readings. Again, uh, it seems pretty accurate for the RMS calculations in that other series, but here um, we're going to say it's probably not as good for frequency measurements. Okay, so I think that's it for this one. I uh, appreciate it if you like any of these videos. Uh, please like and subscribe, hit the bell notifications, and most of all, let others know that we're here so we can increase the viewership. It would help a lot. Otherwise, take care and have a really good day. Thanks.